They set out each day just as the sun begins to set, usually traveling in groups of two or three, barefoot, maybe carrying a few belongings in a small bag. Children as young as six or seven say goodbye to their parents and begin a long walk that has become a daily ritual. Some of them come as far as seven kilometers, others come as far as four, two, three. And what starts out as a trickle becomes a flood. At the centers where they will spend the night, hundreds, then thousands of children pour through the gates. This is northern Uganda, what the United Nations has called the world's worst forgotten crisis. These children are called night commuters. Every night, they walk for their own survival. For almost 20 years, the government of Uganda has been locked in a war with the Lord's Resistance Army. The LRA, a rebel force made up predominantly of children who have been abducted from their homes. Because the rebels attack at night, children walk to town to sleep in safety. How old are you? I am 14 years old. The LRA generally targets children between the ages of 7 and 14. Since the war began, they have abducted an estimated 30,000 children. Why do you come here? Because of war. We come here because of war. Yes, there's wars and civil conflicts throughout the continent and around the world. But here it's really a war of children. It's about the children. And it's children who are abducted, children who are killed. The children abducted by the LRA are forced to become porters, if they're lucky, carrying supplies when the guerrillas are on the move. If they are unlucky, they're made into soldiers, forced to kill or mutilate civilians and other children. The girls are often made into sex slaves or are given to rebel commanders as wives. The ones who escape are often traumatized. You were abducted for a week? Two weeks. And what happened? Hmm. They told us to carry a big bug. If I leave that bug fall down, they will kill me. So I carry it. When the rebels are active, tens of thousands of children make the journey into town to find a safe place to sleep. Each morning when the gates to the centers are open, they flood out to begin the long walk home. It's just overwhelming, and I think it's so hard to put that into words, because when you see their faces, and, you know, sometimes they're having fun, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're wet from the rain, sometimes they're hungry, um, you know, it's really overwhelming. No matter what color of clothes they're wearing, the children end up brown from the dust they pick up from the long commute each day. They take on the color of the Ugandan land. The clothes they wear are often like rags, more holes than cloth. I mean, it's a violation of their very right to life. These are children that flee their homes. They come to these centers. Their right to education is jeopardized. Their right to health, their right to play. It steals their very childhood. My parents, I love our parents. My father, I lost him in 1999. And my mother, I lost him in 2003. It's really been called a lost generation. For years, these kids have known nothing about warfare, have had their, their lives disrupted, their schooling disrupted. Um, it's, it's a lost generation here in the North. The war is tearing apart their families, tearing apart the fabric of Ugandan society. The knowledge, the customs, the way of life that has been passed down from generation to generation are all being lost. There is no time to learn. There's only time to walk. Yes, I would say they are lost in a way. They are not getting parental guidance. They are not being cared for. Actually, they are just sleeping like uh, street kids. The war in northern Uganda has forced as much as 90% of the population to flee their homes. They end up in camps like this one, home to more than 20,000 people. Now they live crowded together, dependent on international aid to survive. But even in the camps, people are going hungry. The crowded conditions have led to the spread of diseases, AIDS, malaria, 
Even in the camps, people are not safe from attacks. The rebels prey on the refugees. And in some cases, so does the army that is supposed to be protecting them. They have raped women and girls on occasion. They have uh, forcibly conscripted some young kids. They accuse them or their neighbor or anybody accuses them of being involved with the rebels, the LRA. They yank them right into the barracks and start interrogating them and that is never pretty. The abuses being committed in northern Uganda are so horrific that the International Criminal Court has opened an investigation into crimes against humanity. World leaders everywhere have to put northern Uganda on the top of their agenda to devote more aid and more energy to those who are affected by the war. And they should use their influence strategically to stop the human rights abuse on both sides of the conflict. These children can't wait. They need to be better protected by the Ugandan army. They need the United Nations to send more resources and personnel. They need to go to school. Those who've escaped from the rebels need help in rebuilding their lives. And they need to know that the outside world cares about them. That the forgotten crisis is remembered.